Hi, I'm Martin Fevier. I am the band's producer. I produce the EP, Fading Days, and the last album, The Possibility and the Promise, and the current record that we're working on right now here at Jupiter Studios in Seattle. It's my boy August down there who's eating a small chihuahua. Uh, they came to me, I don't know actually why they came to me, whether I was recommended or they were just looking for studios, but they came to me with uh, a few songs they'd recorded, and uh, I immediately realized that they were quite good. They had a lot of potential, a lot of promise. The songs were really great. The recording wasn't so hot, so we uh, decided to uh, re-record the songs. I think we added some new songs and made the Fading Days EP. I really liked the EP I thought the songs were great and we did it in quite a short time uh, what I did is I called a quite a powerful lawyer friend of mine to come in and listen to the songs he met up with a band here and uh, he really liked them so he helped get them uh, a record deal with Hopeless and then that led to the last record which was The Possibility and The Promise this time they're much better prepared the last record you know, when we entered the record, we were a little bit short on songs. What they had were, were great songs, but they uh, they needed a few more. This time, we're we're much better prepared. We've pretty much got the whole record ready, song wise. Um, I think Will's going to come up with a couple more while we're in here, uh, so we can add to the numbers. But I'm I'm very 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 happy with the songs the way they are right now. We did uh, we did about uh, ten days of pre production before we got in here and just kind of trimmed them up and changed a few things here and there, but they were much further along with the writing than they were on the last record. They've really progressed a tremendous amount as a band. They play a lot better. Matt sings better. They get along better, I believe. They care about each other more. It's it's a real. It was it was great. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> It's not a bad idea. Maybe. No, I am um, just in the bridge and then when just I wrote, the outro. When I wrote this bridge, I was thinking strings for it. Okay. Yeah. Just because it, it needs that, you know. Okay. Yeah, then if that makes sense. Really and I, I think it, it doesn't need to be like to. crazy harmonic. It could be just like a stacked monophonic line, thing. you know. Mm -hmm. So it would be really simple to cut. We could, we, could, we could put it I down with synths and just have to cut and double it. Yeah. Okay, but I think Portamento at the end would be really nice. Is the next record quality of the same? I think. This is a lot of sound. It's a great song, but it doesn't sound good. Figure out the ending. Buddy, I got it. You got it? You really like that though? Uh, That's not what I was playing. What was it playing? No, no I don't think about what no down let a land down to let a let down to let a land down to let a let down. There we go. Yes, what a good lad. It's the guitar. We won't have you murdered today. My first beauty. This is our schedule, and we are early it's in... It's on the board. This is our board, and we are early in production here on our, on our latest record. What we have here is, all this the is the schedule. title, as it says here, and we're going to have all the titles of our songs. We could actually write all the titles of our songs, even though they're all temporary titles of our songs out. We have gotten to that part yet. 
Uh, and then these are, when there's an X through it, it means that it's done. So we've laid the tracks down uh, and they've been mixed. So one slash usually means the track is laid and then the other one means that it's, it's been like put together. So this song is, is pretty much ready to go. Uh, we need some lead vocals and some backup vocals and some overdubs, but these are going to be the last things that we do anyway because those are sometimes going to involve bringing other people in. All relatives is to... What? Sorry, I have, uh, I have flatulence. Ah, I get nervous in front of the camera. Anyway, um, so yeah, that's our, that's our board. It gives us... I can even smell that one myself. I don't, I don't... Continue on about the board, please. I think I finished. The when you are, it's not your fault you knew that. The way we were, we're just too caught up in it. Too far to see how things can be. I thought I knew who you were. I thought I knew who you were. I thought I knew who you were. <laughs> so Mason here is that just remember to uh, we're gonna have to watch those. Do you need lyrics? No. Um I I wanna be careful about how you shape those words. Okay. With the things things were were not were not were were were, 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 were. I thought I knew who you were. Yeah. Were. Yeah, that's right. Raise that top lip and you'll get more. Were. There you go. It's a pl it's a more it's a better sound than it's less er. It's more er. Uh, yeah. It's a yeah. More. Okay. okay. And that's um, things. 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 Which where where's that? Th things can be. Oh, too far to see how things can, things can be. And you won't be flat on it either, okay? Okay. Um, your phone should be up and running. Alrighty. And then do you like on the, on the verses, uh, the, the I, uh, let me see. Predictable inside. I like uh, that. You like the... I like that, but it shouldn't be too nice. <clears throat> okay. I don't want you singing too much up in the nose. Mm -hmm. Okay. I know that when we get rolling, you'll push it a little bit more, get a little throatier. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it's too, it's too sweet. You don't want sweet. You don't want sweet. We want slightly sweet. Slightly sweet. Slightly sweet, but Cute. not too sweet. It's <laughs> not <laughs> your fault, you knew that. Yes, we are. Two years to the day I'm on my way I'm living inside with the words you say It's killing me how you're always bringing me down Now we've made it through to the first verse, that's how. <laughs> So put to rest. So put to rest. Awesome. Wonderful. Very good. Let's get to the second verse, okay? And we'll, we'll uh, do it in pieces. So we'll sing it all, all the way through once, and then we'll break it up a little bit. Okay. Just a slightest little turn. All right. 
Make sure that uh, when you hit worse, you put a good R in worse and an S in it too. You never learn to expect the worse! Yeah, you can make that R a little stronger. Worse! Wor yeah, yeah. Kind of like were, basically. Yeah, were, were. Like, remember, raise that top lip. Worse! There you go. And make sure when you get to eyes that you sing eyes, not oys. Okay, here we go. I just want that eyes to be a little bit brighter. Widen your mouth a little bit. Open up. Same with turn, okay? Okay. Very good though. Your pitch is great, by the way. I think you, I think you can brighten worse up a little bit too, because I think it would make it go a little bit higher. It's, a, it's maybe just a Nats cock flat. Microphone. Jupiter Studios. This is William. Can I help? You? the eyes right there thank you you see better believe it Don't grind, don't strum through it too much, it gets too loose feeling. That was saucy. Turn it up, turn it up. It went up a little high, didn't it? Yeah. 
Mm -hmm. Like it. Disagreeing with me when the camera's here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, Shit. Anything that we don't like or I don't like, we should just put it on like a. That's what we'll do. We'll have that whole song be triple <laughs> Start to finish. But that's that's a good first take. I think the feel is really good and the kicks are pretty damn strong. Let's go do it again. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Get out there, Different boys. Different snare drum or same us, snare yeah. drum? I like it. I think it's cool on all the fills. It feels really crispy and like the front end's really like pointed and tight without sounding too metallic and hard. It's nice. Too metallic. Mm. I'm gonna turn on the two by twelve to make it a bigger guitar sound. What's that? I'm gonna turn on the two by twelve to make it a bigger guitar sound. Now this time? Yeah. For the take? For the for the scratch? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Crane, this is like old times that when you sit here. I know. Except <laughs> I'm in here. <laughs> Strap it in. He's just yeah. talking trash about you guys the whole time. Just Me? Yeah. No. That's right. Yeah. But yes, I mean, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> That's on video. <laughs> what, what happened? Nothing. Some of this stuff we're not going to be able to... We'll just, on. uh... Did the jackhammer you? Have we discussed this yet? Have we let everybody know about the world of the jackhammer? No, the jackhammer stays, stays inside. I'll explain the jackhammer, and then I will proceed for the next few days to round you guys. It'll be pretty funny. I think it's going to be a bigger sounding record. It's going to be uh, deeper. I think we've got better sounds this time. Uh, I think it's more confident. It's a little bit more mature. It's not a huge, not a huge departure because I don't think they, you know, they don't have the desire to, to depart hugely from where they were, where they're at. I think that would be the wrong thing to do, and I think it would disappoint their fans. Um, you know, it, it's a very amber Pacific record. It feels great. And what could you see the next, you know, if the band keeps this trajectory, what, what are the things that you think that they could accomplish in time? I don't know. That's not up to me. All I can do is help them make the best record I can. I mean, if they stay together and continue to have a good time playing together and have fun doing shows, I mean, that's that's the main thing. I mean, I'm sure they're going to sell records still. They're going to sell more records, I'm sure, because they work incredibly hard. Uh, but... Uh, no, I, that's 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 for fate to decide. And the most fun that you have recording with them, what's what's what the highlight of your days usually working with these guys? What you do know, you enjoy? Actually, working with all of them is great. They're all sweethearts. They're they're smart guys. They're very down to earth. They're patient and they work really hard at what they do. I mean, I really enjoy the whole aspect of it. Um, you know, we we spend a lot of time on all the parts of the songs and make sure that they're as good as we can get them. That's in the sounds and the performances too. So no, I'm enjoying it all. It's it's a it's a it's a fun record to make. Even Greg. Even Greg is sitting right beside you. Yes, I mean, Greg and I get along very well. He plays great. He's a bass machine. Thank you, Martin. You're welcome. We're here at uh, our old high school, Federal Way High School, is the name of it in the cafeteria. In fact, the very cafeteria that we played, well, Greg wasn't in the band yet. Yeah, I wasn't cool. But as seniors in high school, Amber Pacific played our first show right over here, right over here in this corner. We brought in our stuff during lunchtime and played for all three lunches. You know, our close friends were into it and that was about it, which was pretty discouraging but it was fun anyways I think we rocked it we played some Jimmy Eat World covers the middle was a big song at that time so we played that one and uh, it was awesome that's where it all started this this school is sweet because it has an upstairs too that's where my English class was is right up those stairs forgot what room it was but you know it's your Mrs. Weddle she's real like, oh wait awesome. we had English together up there yeah. sophomore me and year. Greg had English <laughs> together Will didn't talk to me I didn't like Greg at the time Oh, you know what? Let's see. I think this one was one of my old lockers. That might have been like my... 
That was like my junior year or senior year, right there. Mine was down here on the ground. Good old 1046. That was a good one. <laughs> then again, I never really used my locker that much. I had like five lockers sophomore year. A locker by each class. Yeah. It was That's easy you. that way. That's you. Okay. Never heard of Pizza Friday before. That's out of our time. We had pizza every day. We had pizza every day at the lunch thing, and that was one of my favorite things to eat. Pizza or the spicy chicken sandwich. Hey, look, wait. There's some spicy chicken sandwich right there, I think. <laughs> Appetizing. This is the 100 wing. Classes are in session right now. The library is off to the right. Didn't spend much time there either, but it's right there. I would to get out of class. The school is very, very big on Eagle Pride because it's a Federal Way Eagle. That's the name of the thing. And uh, the mascot. This is all new. This wasn't here when we were here, but looks pretty cool. Maybe it was a project by someone. Might have Not been for really leadership sure. class. Maybe leadership class. I think Greg did that. I didn't do that. I was in that. leadership class. So, yeah. School song, I forgot it. I'm sorry. I'll try to remember it next time, though. I got nothing. My very first locker was right down here. It was more towards the end. It was like the third one down from the end there. And, yeah, that was my first locker when I was a sophomore coming here. And this down here is like sacred like you don't step on the eagle that's a big no-no as you can see the footsteps go around it but you can clearly tell that people are stepping on the eagle it's not that clean there's trash all over it i didn't really join any clubs or anything i kind of just kept to my friends and myself and uh did a lot of sports when i was in high school like did basketball and football and stuff i, was I wasn't very good but i played it was fun I was oh, in Thanks for cutting me off. Yeah. Thanks. Well, this is awkward. Thanks. We got cables. It's okay. Go ahead. Keep going. I was in photography and had some different photos go to state competition a few times and won some stuff. But other than that, I was just here for friends and to learn. I had another locker over here. I think having a lot of lockers was like the thing to do. Did, wasn't there lockers here? I don't know. Actually, no. I don't think I don't there think was. So. Oh, oh. Let's go back this way real quick. So right now we're walking we're walking down towards the music section of the school. This is the music and arts section. I never did any art classes, but I definitely took guitar class. I don't really remember much from it. I'm not I very good I at took playing it as guitar. Well. It wasn't It wasn't the, the greatest best thing. Class. It taught you single notes and stuff and that wasn't really helpful to me at the time cuz I was just learning and I just basically played a bunch of Green Day songs and learned that way. I had a geometry in that room. I got a B, which is great for me. And uh, actually right there, I had that locker for two years. Which one, Greg? I think it was 17. 3317. There you go. For two years. There you go. So this high school, Federal Way High School, had some things called, this is my locker here, 75, 3075. It was awesome. So Federal Way High School had this thing called Eag Fest, and we Eag were part for of it. Eagle. Eag for Eagle Fest. It's just a music festival, basically like a regular show that you would go to at a club, except they built a stage in the cafeteria that we played our first show at. Also, while we were going to this high school, there was a battle of the bands. We thought that we were going to kill it that night, and we did. It was amazing. Well, we thought we did. It was one did. of the best shows we'd had ever. The crowd loved it. And then out of nowhere, the last band to play somehow stole it from us and they won and yeah <laughs> we were like what the heck we weren't very happy we, we were, were not happy sad. campers and uh kinda you know we never cry. we never won we never won a battle of the bands ever will why don't you tell us about the time you took home the big championship in track and field oh in track and field track and field oh yeah tell yeah. us about it well as you can see these trophies here there's like four of them they're all from when I was in track and field. And uh, it was a great time. I was really fast. And I, I got first place all the time, pretty much in every well, event. Well, that one says third place. That's not mine. That's oh. the team's. Okay. And uh, as you can see in this picture here, I'm the one on the top. That's me, first place. And uh, that's my friend Joe Bob. 
in second. He was a good kid, Joe Bob. And uh, my old math teacher, Mrs. Lakari, she's in there too. She was pretty nice. It's cool. Yeah. So, anyways, that's my uh, winnings from <clears throat> track and field all star. Interesting fact for you. There wouldn't be an Amber Pacific isn't if it weren't for my long-term relationship oh, that in 10th and 11th grade, but I'm not going to give any names out. Here's the thing. The girl that I dated didn't go to the school. She went to a different high school. So I never got to see her during school. It was always after, yeah. you know, at other events. So I can't really go into detail about me and her. But I can say that I also had another girlfriend my senior year after that other one didn't work out. And that, that that happened here. She was a cheerleader, and I'm not going to give out any names again, but... I know who it is, though. He knows. Yeah. I know. That's all you got to know. Pretty much the entire Possibility and the Promise and Fading Days EP, all those songs are all about the same girl. Uh, lots of emotions. Except for the ones that aren't about girls. Except for the ones that aren't about girls, and the ones that Greg wrote the lyrics to. Yeah. There we go. Lyrics. But a good portion. Hey, Greg, tell us about your high school romances. We already went over that. I didn't have any high school romances. Greg. I just loved to learn. Okay, Education moving on. Education was my lover. Moving on. This thing is a doorstop. And uh, when you'd have to walk through the halls and it was real crowded, I tripped over it a few times and I wasn't very happy about it. I have no idea what it's really supposed to be. But I don't like it. My voice cracked again. I do know what it's supposed to be. But I can't say right now what it's supposed to be. Is it perverted? It might be perverted and gross, and I don't want to get into detail about that. All right, this is uh, Mr. Cameron. Hello. He was my history teacher. Oh, you hello. hold the mic a little closer. Sorry. Yeah. I don't know. I'm a teacher. I don't know. Um, he was my teacher for, I think, two years. Uh huh. Yeah. Had him for various history classes. Right. And uh, when I would take tests, he would walk around and flick your ear. Okay, we don't need to talk about that. Thought it was real funny. But um, what kind of a student do you think I was? I think you were a great student. In fact, uh, I enjoyed having you for two years in a row. Uh, you certainly always knew the answer. Well, you remember uh, I used to say how important your education and history was. And so I'd like to just hear from you um, how your U.S. history studies have helped you in your career here as a musician. Have you ever been a musician? Uh, no. Some people would say the orchestra that I conduct is the history of the United States. Nice. <sighs> Thank you. Any tattoos? Okay. No, none that I want to share with you. How are your map reading skills? Um, my map reading skills aren't that good. Mm -hmm. uh, I tend to get us lost from time to time, but um, we get there. Well, really, that's that's the. It's whole usually point, the it? the directions that are wrong. I can read a map, right? But MapQuest doesn't cut it. Well, they do say life is a journey, not the destination. So when's the last time you took a listen to a record? Uh, as a matter of fact, I was in, you won't believe it, but I really was in uh, Best Buy up in Northgate where I live, and I was walking through the record department, or the CD department, and uh, I wanted to see if you guys had albums there, and you did. Yep. And then also the Fred Meyer, so you guys are everywhere. It was really exciting for me to see that. Now, I can't honestly say that I've listened to the songs except for the uh, DVD that, or the CD that you gave me. But um, I'm sure it's very good music. Okay. And how come you never come to shows? <laughs> we have one this Friday. This Friday? Yes. Uh, where is it going to be? In Seattle at the Showbox. At the Showbox? Yes. Oh, that's, that's my neck of the woods. Yeah. Uh, uh, can I, do you got a pass for me? We can make it happen. Or do I have to pay? We can make it happen. I am a teacher. I don't have any money. We can make it happen. All right. All right. So this Friday at the Showbox Theater. So why haven't you come to any of our other shows? Uh... Um, honestly, because I think I would feel out of place there. I'm, I'm a little old. There's there's older people there. Uh, You're not a day over 47, are you? Okay. Uh, <laughs> so that that's why. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I have no excuse. If you ever see this man right here at one of our concerts, make sure you come say hi. Tell him that, you, that you're glad that he's there. Thank you very much. 
Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. That would be terrific. I'd look forward to that. See, I didn't know that would be an option. Otherwise, I would have come it, a lot earlier. Right. I'm going to be crowd surfing. So we're here at my middle school, Sacagawea Junior High, and uh, I have a sweet story to tell. Basically, what happened here was in eighth grade, um, I was in the lunch area next to the vending machines, and this lovely girl, let's see, I was waiting to uh, pick my, you know, I was making a selection about what candy I wanted, and this girl comes up behind me and pushes like two buttons and I get what I didn't want so I turn around and I was like what are you doing and she goes you know she didn't say anything and then so I kind of like I gave her a little push you know because she was a girl I didn't want to hurt her or anything and then she pushed me back so that made me a little bit more angry I pushed her again she went across the room and I was like okay get them done like I'm over it she comes back and before I know it I got the right hook Bam! Right into this eye. I didn't know what to do. Everyone was watching. It wasn't really embarrassing, but I just... I went straight to the bathroom. My best friend at the time, Jake, came in with me, and my eye just started swelling up huge. And uh, I went to the office after that, and, you know, by, by the time I got home that day, it was completely purple and just the worst black eye anyone has ever seen. Not to mention, at the time, I had braces, too. So that makes it just worse. I had a black eye and braces and uh, had to go to school the next day and, and answer everyone's questions about what happened. And, you know, that's okay. It happens to everyone, getting punched in the eye by a girl. It happens. But uh, to make this story awesome and cool at the end, in 12th grade at Federal Way High School, she came up to me one day and was like, hey, I'm really sorry about punching you in the face in 8th grade. (laughs) It made everything better. It was great. So I I forgave her, and we both moved on with our lives. And that's my happy story. What up, everybody? We're going to be checking out my crib here today. And uh, you may think by the palm tree behind me that we're in Southern California. Uh Uh-uh, I make my home right here in Seattle. Come inside, check it out. You enter into the hallway here, and uh, we'll start off going into the kitchen. It's like the center of the house, which is kind of cool. I'm working on cooking, learning how to cook a few things. I'm trying to learn like how to cook one new meal every week. We got uh, a quality stove, your microwave. We got all the, we got two toasters, because you know, when you want Eggos or toast in the morning, you gotta make sure you take care of business. Got a uh, blender over there for all the margaritas and things like that. In here, in this cupboard, we have my personal favorite. We have the Star Wars Slurpee cups. They are 32 ounces, and I have the rest of them are in the dishwasher. But these are my favorite. I drink a lot of chocolate milk. It does a body good, and well, eventually it'll do my body good, hopefully. Obviously, you got to check out the fridge. We're lucky enough to actually like have stuff in it, which is actually kind of cool. We got. Uh, pitcher of uh, some leftover beer there, always important. Uh, got plenty of milk, and uh, you gotta have the, you know, the original teriyaki sauce. We got hot dogs and quesadillas. The freezer's where it's at. We got tons of stuff. Like, look how many burritos we have. These burritos are like two dollars and nineteen cents for ten, so you really can't go wrong. We got a ton of chicken. Can't go wrong with the Otter Pops. Everybody, everybody likes those. Always good. Always refreshing. Got some chilled mugs here. I'm actually going to take one of these here for a second. Yep, got nice chilled mugs. I'll be using this a little later. I'll show you guys why. This is what we call the theater room here. It's got got a nice 42-inch Philips plasma TV with Ambilight. It's pretty sweet. Lights up the wall. Got the best sound system you can get. Clips. Rocks the house. Shakes the house. And uh, so this is where people come. We watch movies. We hang out. We watch football games here. Uh, this is where... Uh, we bring the poker table, we hang out here, always usually have sports center on in the background. Over there you just got, I like to call this the, uh, I like to call this the throw up room. Because uh, people come over and we're having, a, having too good of a time. This is the bathroom where they usually spend most of their time. It's just got a sink and a toilet, but you know what, it, it, it works, it works. And it's good to have it right by the you know, theater room, so that way if, when you're drinking those big sodas and the popcorn when people are over, 
they can just run over there and still watch the movie and not miss a thing. We're gonna head into the, what I call the frat house part of the house because it's not quite as you know decorated and sophisticated and we don't really mind having it be trashy every once in a while. This is a garage. Now most people put their cars in the garage. We feel like we should use this extra space to have kind of a gaming center and a gaming area here. Obviously we have a ping pong table which has still yet to be used for ping pong seeing as how we got the we got the paddles right here and uh, they haven't been opened yet. So, but eventually, eventually I'm sure we'll actually play ping pong on our on our ping pong table, but right now we got it set up and ready for beer pong. It's a popular game here at the house. People come over and play it all the time. We have a good time. And then we got a we got a sweet dartboard over there. You cannot, I cannot stress this enough. If you're gonna get a dartboard, get the good real dart dartboards, not those plastic ones where the tips break and it like electronically keeps score for you. You know, just chalk works just fine. Right here we got our poker table. It's out here in the garage for now. This is where we keep it when we're not using it, but we don't play out in the garage. We play inside. And as we move over here, we got the foosball table. It's always important to have a foosball table because everybody likes foosball. We're working on getting a pool table here in the next couple months, so if we ever do a Cribs 2, you'll be able to check that out. You know, most people in their garage have lots of tools and stuff, and we got that. We got lots of paint, but we'd just like to thank, just like to thank my man Thomas at Rockstar. I got a bunch of Rockstar here. So, you know, if I ever get thirsty or I'm ever tired, there's plenty of that stuff to go around. Eventually we'll start actually like putting in the fridge and chilling it, but there's so much over there. And here, this is a room that we haven't really worked on too much in the house, but eventually we got lots of grand ideas. This room's gonna be called the Grotto, and we're planning on doing a lot of fun stuff to it. Over here right now we have a card table, but over there in the corner we're gonna build a uh, tiki style bar. This room's gonna have a tiki theme to it. I'm gonna get some bamboo blinds, paint the room green, and uh, you know, we're just gonna have it filled with a bunch of like bean bags and love sacks and it's just going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be kind of like the, the chill lounge room. Over here, we got our hot tub, which is a lot of fun. If you don't have a hot tub, it's a lot of fun. However, I'm learning here that you need to put those chemicals over there in the hot tub on a regular basis, looking at two or three times a week. And if you can, as you can probably see, I haven't really been doing that. It's, uh, well, it's getting kind of green. Heading over this way, we walk through the kitchen. This is our nice dining room table here. We've eaten a total of zero meals on it and are probably never will. Yeah, we're, typic we're, the, we're typical guys. We like to actually like eat in front of the TV. We do cook though, so that's a good thing. Over here, you guys can meet my roommate. That's, that's Brett. He's my main man right now. Nice he's, to see you guys. He's chilling. He's kicking it. He's studying for his, his, his last final, so but he's uh, pretty excited. We'll have a good time. You guys will come over and play some cards tonight. But uh, this is the like living room, lounge area. It's a little more relaxed, a little more spacious. Lots of, people, lots of couches and chairs and place for people to hang out. Can't have enough plasma TV, so we got another one right there, 42 inches. It's, it's awesome. You know, Cable bill is pretty high, but it's worth it. As we head upstairs, you can see we're definitely in the holiday spirit, and we got our Christmas tree up. It's very big. It's very large, but it's nicely decorated. This is, the, this is the best view of the house from up here. You can pretty much see everything. You know, this is kind of like the, the watching perch. So when we have people over, we just hang out up here and, and say hi to everybody. You can see the whole house. It's really cool. It's got a big open layout. Heading over here. First room, Brad, you just met. This is his. He did something pretty cool with his room. He painted his uh, back wall over there camo. Like, it's a camo kind of print. And it's pretty sweet. It's certainly something I wouldn't do in my room, but man, if, if I was a hunter, you know, why not? And then he's, he's got some uh, real elk, deer. He's going to get mad at me because I don't know exactly which they are, but those are antlers and they're real. And they like hold his fishing rods in his hat. So his room's pretty cool. And then uh, heading over here, we got Mitch's room. Mitch is the uh, lawyer to be. Over there, he's got the University of Washington diploma. Eventually, I'll get one of those, but only when uh, the time is right. His room's pretty cool, nice and plush. Everybody likes kicking and hanging in here. He painted his wall coffee. I guess I think that's the color. It's like coffee or something like that. And, uh, it's a pretty cool room. We like it. He likes it, which is good. Over here is the master suite. And this would be my room right here, as you can see. It's pretty big. It's pretty spacious. I got a, I got a huge, this bed is huge. It's a huge king-size bed. And uh, 
it definitely, I definitely get a lot of sleep. I am lucky enough to not have to really worry about waking up at any like specific time or early, so it's always good to have a good bed. Over there, we got the alternative press magazines. I got all the magazines that I've got from them so far. We're in a few of them. Most recently, the most anticipated album is 2007. We're on it. We're pretty excited. That's what we're working on right now in the studio. You guys have been watching that, hopefully. No master bedroom would be complete without dual walk-in closets. Now, most people, most people are cool enough where they can actually fill up their closet. That, that's all the clothes I have. As crazy as that sounds, some of them are in the dirty clothes hamper, but that, that's, that's my wardrobe, like jeans and a bunch of t-shirts and then there's some stuff in the drawers, but that's it. I don't have a lot of clothes. I, you know, I just, I get some for free. I pay for some, whatever, but I'm not big, I'm not big into clothes. I'm not big into fashion. I just wear what keeps me comfortable, wear what keeps me warm and, you know, leave it at that. And over here, we got my own personal bathroom, which is, which is pretty nice. As you can see, everything kind of has the red and tan theme in my room. And, uh, the bath, the bath, the shower is pretty cool. I like the shower a whole bunch. But like around here in the shower, you got the seat, which is always good because occasionally when it's hard to wake up in the morning, and the detachable shower head, which is good for a variety of things like a good scalp massage or whatever, you know, floats your boat. But it's pretty cool. Anyway, as you can see, that's that's my crib, and so now you guys are gonna have to, you know, get in my station wagon and get on out of here. So we'll catch you later, guys. Hey, this is Dango, and I just want to welcome you guys to my home and give you a little tour, show you around where I live here in uh, Fife, Washington, just south of the other guys. This is my kitchen. I actually live with my roommate, Corey Edwards. It's his house. Um, but while we're here, we got a bunch of stuff getting ready to go to the studio. Back again today, and this is pretty funny. I got this shipment in last night of drum heads. Just take a look at that. We are um, we're changing heads every song because I keep going through them, so... That's a lot of drum heads for one record, but that's what we're doing. And here's the living room. Watch TV, whatever. Hang out. We usually sit up late and talk here all the time. And then upstairs is kind of uh, my location, so we're going to head up to my, my little area. Basically, I have two bedrooms to myself and a bathroom, so it's a pretty awesome setup for me. And first coming in here, this is my drum room. Extra bedroom we don't do anything with, so usually I have my two drum kits set up in here. and. All my extra stuff and there's all my broken cymbals from last tour and some of my extra gear moving on over here to my bedroom pretty basic nothing too exciting going on here I kind of don't really own anything so I've got my clothes and food and the bed and that's about it this was a gift for the band from uh, Ashley our make-a-wish girl so that's pretty cool has some sentimental value to be honest the other guys haven't even seen it yet I was supposed to take it in I just haven't done it yet but that's pretty awesome she made that for us my buddy Jeremy got me this for Christmas last year. Pretty sweet. I don't know where you find a spade on a uh, stained glass, but that's awesome. These sticks from Cadence Academy, these things weigh like 10 pounds a piece, and you warm up with them, which is awesome because they weigh probably four to five times as much as your sticks, and you get really loose on those, kind of like a workout, you know, like a having a weighted bat, and then you go to your normal stick, and you can just go a whole lot faster. So those are pretty awesome, and I like to use those, and warm up anytime take them on tour or when I'm sitting at home whatever this is my belt buckle collection pretty awesome actually most people don't have this many or this much variety a couple notable ones are the Big Mac here from McDonald's that's an actual Big Mac uh, MXPX logo good friends of mine and various other ones but uh and the Air Jordan one it's a little bit gangster I wouldn't actually wear it but I love Michael Jordan so it's pretty sweet that was also a gift from my one of my buddies, Jeremy. These are my 85 Air Jordans. They're a reissue, they're not original, but they're still pretty solid and they fit and they're huge in terms of how high the shoe goes. What's up guys? <clears throat> That's right, I'm writing emails right now. And I'm that guy in our band. I uh I email back every fan who writes me. So if you want to reach me, Dango at Amber Pacific, I'm usually the dude that gets back to you. I'm not getting down on the other guys. But a lot of them are busy and don't have time for this necessarily, and this is one of the things that I love to do. I will get back to every fan and every kid who writes me, whether I know them or not. And like right now, looking at my emails, I've got a <clears throat> high school friend from like three or four years ago that I haven't talked to. I mean, I haven't seen in a few years. Uh, a girl from Montana. 
A guy who towed my vehicle last week, truck driver, he emailed me today to say thank you for the CD I gave him. Pretty cool. And then I get like um, kids all over the country asking me stuff, asking about the band. And I love it. Like I love to get back to people. Sometimes it's tough if it's like, you know, I go two or three days without doing it, then it really backs up and I have to spend a couple hours. But I promise that I will get back to you if you write me. Um, I love it if people ask me deep questions or anything about my faith or anything about Christianity. But you know, I love music questions. I love drumming questions. Um, yeah, I love getting back to people. I love communicating and just making new friends and being able to stay in touch with them this way. You know, 10 years ago, you couldn't really do it like this. You just, if you were touring, you wouldn't be able to stay in touch with everybody. Hey, we're going to keep going through my house here. Now we're going to get to the weight room down here. And uh, this is something when I'm not on tour, I really try to hit up and hit almost every day if I can. Because one, I'm getting old, I'm 25, and two, it's really hard to work out on the road, so I try to get in shape when I'm home, and mainly I eat so much crap is the problem, because I love the Golden Arches, McDonald's, so I gotta work out just to kinda keep it balanced, but also, uh, I do work out on tour most days, I take some weights with me, free weights, and an ab ball, and do a little bit of stuff, but I really try to hit it hard when I'm home, because this is the time to... This is the time to crunch in and do it, and drumming is such a physically demanding thing in our style of music, so to try to keep your body in shape, and, you know, I don't party and that kind of stuff either, so that helps, but still, you know, it's a lot of wear and tear on your body every single day to do that on tour, so this is what we do here. I'll stop to take this hey, this is Dango. Thanks again for stopping in to see my house, and uh, right now I'm getting ready to go run, and I want to share a quick story on that, because I had knee surgery, and check out my knee here. In high school, I, they found out I had knee disease and I played baseball and basketball and cross country and was planning on going to college for sports. And then, uh, because the knee disease, a bone thing, they had to cut it. So that's why I went to music for college, or went to college for music. But um, I couldn't run, I had surgery. And then a couple years later, I had surgery and that was two years ago. Some of you kids were there on that tour. I was on crutches. And uh, after that, I haven't run since. It's been two years. And then last year, I also had a knee transplant, my third knee surgery. So now I have a new knee and it's right at the one year mark. I'm extremely thankful, it's quite a blessing. So I've been running now for three days. This will be, be my fourth day and I'll get back to doing that on tour. So I'm really stoked and looking forward to it. And uh, just want to say thanks again for stopping in. Hey everybody, we thought we'd uh, introduce you to Air Pacific's biggest fan. This lucky young lady over here won the contest and she happens to be my mom. Hey everybody, this is my mom, Lori Didier. Mom, how long have we known each other now? 21 years. It'll be 22 on January 17th. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, uh, and, what, and what was the lead singer of Air Pacific like as a kid? Well, oh gosh. I, I don't know if you want to go there, but... Um, uh, he loved Disney. He really liked all the Disney movies. He would wake up really, really early in the morning and he would point to the TV and he'd go, see, 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 see. And that meant Sesame Street. But he was also very smart. Um, he kind of sang. He played baseball. I did. Soccer. You know, just a normal kid. Good kid. Smart. Very smart. If, uh, if, I, wasn't, uh, if I wasn't a lead singer in a band right now, what would you expect me to do or what when I was growing up did you think that I would be because obviously we never thought that I'd be the singer in a band um well you were really smart so there was a lot of ways you could go with that doctor lawyer dentist and you're also really athletic so you could have been soccer player baseball player that type of thing um I actually always thought you maybe could be a an actor you were really good at that but the singing thing we didn't do too much no, no. Yeah. Except at Christmas. We did sing at Christmas. I forgot about That's this. True. I play the piano. I do know how to play the piano. Uh, not that well. But we would sing Christmas carols, and I even have Christmas music books to this day that say Matt and Lori. So, like Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer, remember? Mm -hmm. I would sing one part, and then you would come and sing the yep. Matt part. So, we did sing at Christmas time. Yep, I remember. Yes. I remember. Didn't I? When I was younger, I recorded a really small, like cassette tape that I of me singing Christmas songs that we gave to the family yes. members. Because Aunt Barb says she has that. Yes, that'd be pretty funny. Um, and you, you really liked MC Hammer. 
Oh, you were well, big on the. Well, everybody liked MC Hammer back in the day. I mean, and and you wore those kind of pants that were all they, printed. They were called hammer pants, actually. Yeah. That's what we called them. Was hammer pants. I forgot that. Yeah. Yep. He's he's. I'm sure he's doing lots of great things right now. MC Hammer. What is an embarrass <sighs> a moment an embarrassing story about me or a story that people would find interesting of me growing up? You should have prepped me on this. I would have thought about it a little bit more. Um, well, he did love Disney characters. I I do have to say that. And he went to a very nice Montessori preschool. And they had a Halloween celebration, as all uh, preschools usually did in those days. And he wanted to be his favorite Disney character, which was Snow White. So we do have pictures. He was Snow White. He has a nice little Snow White dress and a Snow White mask. And then he wore these boots, like moon boots or... They were, the, they were the Napoleon Dynamite boots. Yeah. What they were. Exactly. Exact and he same. had no shame. We went to this big Halloween party and Matt yes. just marched around as Snow White. And, and nobody could figure out who it was because, <laughs> you know, they didn't think it would be Matt. But it was. But I showed a great deal of self-confidence as a parent to let my child go out there and be Snow White at age, I don't know what age it was, well, three had, or four. You whatever. had to have been worried about my sexuality at that point. No, well, I don't know because you are... I didn't want to be any of the dwarves or you anything were, like that. I wanted to be Snow White. You were, really, gotta be. You were really macho Snow White. Though. Oh, I was a macho <laughs> Snow White. <laughs> and then you were Captain Hook the next year, so I, I, was, a little, I was a little bit... You know, I completely forgot about that. I could never, I could never figure out why I really didn't like Halloween as a holiday. I always thought that it was because girls would run around in in practically nothing, and that was just something that irritated me. And they always just, you know, it's like Halloween. We can all wear our underwear. But now I realize the reason I don't like Halloween is because I was a girl once, way back in the day, as a little kid. But you liked it. The main thing we've always done is just believe that he could do whatever he wants to do and not really have any preconceived notions as far as that, what that is. So you send a kid off to college that was a valedictorian, and he comes home after a couple of quarters at college and says, well, you know, I might need to take a break from college because I'm in the band. We knew he was in a band, obviously, but we might be signing on a record label. And, you know, you go, oh, yeah, right, that'll be nice, great, no problem, thinking that it wouldn't really happen. But then when it did happen, it's like, you know, you got to go do, you got to go do this because it was really a big deal and it was a really important opportunity for him. So, and the band. And I think that's the main thing that we tried to do as parents is just support what it was that was happening in his life at that time that would give him the most happiness. And that is Amber Pacific. And it's one of those, it's one of those, it was one of those situations where I was in school and I had absolutely no idea what I wanted to do with my life. I was, I was 19, 19 years old and, and a freshman in college and I was looking at, you know, what am I going to major in and taking classes towards whatever major. And it was one of those things where, you know what, in two and a half, three, three more years, I'm going to graduate and I'm still not going to know what it is that I wanted to do. And so I... I always told myself that, you know what, I can always go back to school, this opportunity isn't always going to be there to be in a band, but in the back of my mind it was also, maybe I'll, maybe I'll figure out exactly what it is that I really do want to do with the rest of my life, because music, you know, I'm going to be able to hopefully have a long career in music, but you know, no matter what, you can't do this your entire life, and now I'm kind of set on what I want to do, which is good, so whenever I do go back to school, I'm going to be a high school principal, and that's something, that's what I decided, and I wouldn't have known that way back when. So whenever I go back, that's what I want to do. So, But I want to tell about a time early on your very first, their first Warp Tour, 2004. Four. And I decided I'd go visit them in Florida, um, kind of for a little vacation with for me and to see them also. And I went to Orlando. Uh, then we went to Fort Lauderdale. Fort Lauderdale, we always... Two summers I did this. We stayed at a really nice hotel. The Vinoy. The Vinoy Renaissance, which is right by the venue. Um, you know, like a five-star hotel. And the guys, they always wanted to take showers in the hotels. 
and this was a place where you you needed to wear your shirt in the lobby and everything so you know it's like midnight and they all want to come over to the vinoy and take a shower and they're carrying their little little uh shower kits Mm -hmm. and towels and stuff and Anyway, we had a great time. They all took a shower, and we went swimming in the swimming pool, big, huge swimming pool, and I believe uh, Taking Back Sunday was also in the swimming pool at the time. Who I didn't even know who they were, but anyway, um, Greg was all excited because yeah. he was talking to well, Taking was... Back Sunday. Uh, and then the next day was Fort Lauderdale, or Pom- Pom- Pomono, or Pom- Fort Lauderdale was... Anyway, and I had that hotel uh, on the ocean. Oh, yeah. The- yeah. And these guys came, and they went, and the band, they, they dove for toothpicks in, in the, the swimming pool. That was yeah. a game they had. But then we got kicked out of the pool, so they went in the ocean. So this is Amber Pacific in the ocean in Florida, and I just remember them going, we're freaking swimming in the Florida ocean. This is so awesome. And then I think you all took your shorts off and ran around naked. But anyway, yes. it was a it was a fun moment. I liked that. Yeah, those are those. Those were the days. Those are the good days, when 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 we would play, and you would be there, and there would be about three other people watching us. But I knew all the words. Yeah, and you were the only one who knew the words, and everybody else was just getting to know us way back then. Yeah. Mom, what is your favorite Amber Pacific song to date? Okay. Well, when they were first um, follow through, they had a version of postcards, which is not the same version. They made the lyrics more sophisticated. Mm -hmm. But I liked postcards in the very beginning. That was my favorite. You mean Promise Me was what it used to be called. Was it? Yeah, it used to be called Promise Me. Well, anyway, the one with postcards from California. And then, but now my favorite is Gone So Young. And Gone So Young, you know, is about a friend of theirs that, that died before their um, senior year in high school. So he's a, a boy from our community, and, and um, so it has a special place because of that. But I also really like the song. And I want that song played at my funeral. Okay. We'll have to change the words. Oh, It'll have to be, be gone. gone so old. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> This is my house and my neighborhood, and I'm on a secret mission right now to go save Santa because he's not quite flying yet. Santa's actually got a little more pull in the movie. Yeah, he's coming to life. We'll pull a circle, you will be able to see something. Santa's looking bad. There he oh, goes. There he goes. Down. Watch out. Oh. He's going. Santa's down. fine. No, he fell. Oh. Santa's going down. He's just feeling the wind. There's a the bunch water. of water in the there's a bunch of water in the back part of the clear thing. So it's like tilting. And I got my feet completely soaked in mud. Yeah. Have a hamburger. Oh thanks, dude. Okay. Appreciate Have it. some snacks. Snack? I'm coming around. This is Check this out. My church. <laughs> and that is our trailer. You've probably seen it on the road. I'll go to the right of it. <laughs> yep, that's where we keep all our stuff. 
This and is this the, is where we keep our thing that keeps our stuff. Our trailer got broken into here, which is kind of ironic being in like a church parking lot. A good place, something bad like that happened. Whew. So, yeah, that's they, our trailer. This is also where we, we have come. insurance, so what up? <laughs> this is also where we come when, um, you know, recently we've been doing the, the tour bus thing. This is where the bus comes and picks us up, is right here, and we always bring our stuff from our houses yep. to this place. This is the this is where every tour starts. Right here. This is the starting point. Sweet does it have parking a name? lot. What does it have a name? The uh, Brook Lake, Lake Community Church. And our old guitar player Justin's here. Yeah. Inside, somewhere. Somewhere. He's a church. This is kind of his church too. He, he works here. He works here. Greg goes there sometimes too. Every other Saturday. Every other Saturday. That's pretty cool. Go ahead, Greg. Talk you got with this me. one, Will. Okay. So we're coming up on Club Impact, the old Club Impact, which is where we first played uh, when we were a band, starting as a band. Follow through. They as played, follow through. And they played their first show there. Yeah, yeah, we I played their first band, show. Yeah. Greg wasn't in the band yet. Um, but my first show with the band was here. It was at Club Impact. We played a lot at Club Impact. A lot of bands played a lot at Club Impact, like Acceptance and um, Gatsby's American Dream, Vendetta, Vendetta Red. Vendetta Red. So we're coming up on it. It's on the right over here. Um, looks like it's in construction right now. Oh, that's, that's it right there with yeah. the metal panel siding. Turn right, turn right, turn right. Go in the ship. Hell yeah! Breaking yeah, the, the law. Off-roading. So this is the this is the old club impact. It's got a bunch of metal stuff on the side. This it didn't used to look like this. It didn't used to look like this, but this is where we Stop. used to play. Apparently, it's a studio. A studio now. Or turning into one. It's hard to see because it's dark, but uh, yeah, this is where we used to play when we first started out as a band. And uh, we can go show you the new Club Impact now. There's a lot of good shows here and a lot of bad ones. Memorables? Not Someone so stole memorable. my wireless thing here once, and I think it was actually Will's, and I had to pay him back for it. Yes, that's true. That sucked. I don't know if you paid me back. No, I did because it was. I think you should pay me back. It was a hundred dollars, and at the time that was a lot of money, and I. Somebody's lying. It was hard I don't, to give I don't you hundred dollars. You paid me back. I paid you back. I'm have to you check you my know receipts. I don't like the debt. I you just ran a red light, son. <laughs> <laughs> Take it right here. Take it right. Pacific Avenue. Oh. Downtown Tacoma. Says stop. Our yeah, prom was here. Going. Yeah, our Downtown high school Tacoma. prom. We'll show you where that was. That yeah. Too. We all live about a half hour away from here. Half hour away from Seattle, we're kind of in between the two. This is the other. We actually uh, we wrote "Good Times Last Forever" about our prom here because we wanted the good times to last forever, and there was bubbles and there was a pool. Actually, none of this really happened, and that song was written way before our prom, and I wasn't even in the band when that song was written. I was gonna say seriously. I was gonna say that wasn't about that. Okay, yeah, you're right. It wasn't. Yeah. The Washington State History Museum, Museum is where so our prom, prom was. Slash Union Station slash... Yeah. Is this it? Yep. Oh wait, no, no, no. Yeah, this, this is it. it. Yeah. This isn't it. It was it right here. No, no, no. It was no, this. Wait, wait. Oh, Union here it is. Station. Union Station. Yeah. This is where we had our prom. Yeah. Greg, we were getting old. Yeah. That was like 43 years ago. It was awesome. No, it sucked. It uh, sucked get out of this. Bad. Wait, wait. Do we stay? Yep. You go keep right. Going go straight. Right. Keep going straight. So yeah, here we go. Anyways, Greg's date left him that night. It was pretty sad. Oh. I was there yeah. for him though. No, no, you weren't. Sorry. You you weren't there for me. I was all by myself, asleep in a chair. Here it is. It's coming up. Club yeah. Impact. Okay. Club Impact. Right there on the corner, where the U-Haul truck is, is the new Club Impact. And there's a kid dancing it's in and out of the door. Brick City. No, it's Club Impact. You want to try this out, Peter? Why doesn't no, my here. window work? What? Cresco? I can't read it. I locked you. Club Impact. That, that's here right, right there. Here. There's probably a show there tonight. There, I think there is. You going to walk up and oh. talk to some people? Um, no. Actually, it might just be dancing tonight. Back up. They hold, um... They do hold dance classes there. I remember our very last show at the at that Club Impact before our last tour, we kicked it off there and they had this like stomping class going on. Do stuff like this. You know. Like that. Yeah. yeah. Stomping. We didn't stomp our feet. 
like that. Clap your hands and stomp your feet. Anyways, we were loading our gear in and stuff, and that they had that going on. It was a little weird, awkward clash of genres. You know, as we're saying. Hey everybody, we're at Supercuts right now, and the reason that we're here is for a haircut. I recently cut my hair before we did out, went out on our last tour, and now I'm cutting it again even shorter because I want to make sure you guys still love me for my music. I just can't figure out exactly what it is that I want, but that's what happens when you get a new haircut. Um, maybe because I. Maybe maybe a little shorter in the front because I'm planning on just you know spiking it up straight up, and I think it's a little bit little bit long in the the very front maybe. I got a haircut. This is the new look. Uh, get used to it. You're going to be seen on the road for the next two years. Later. Hey, here we are at my homeland, also known as McDonald's. This is the greatest place in America. And let me tell you why. They have them in every city in the world, pretty much. At least all the ones we ever play in. And let's just look at the menu, for instance. I mean, you don't even have to look. They've got the Big Mac. Classic. Quarter pounder. Classic. Double quarter pounder. Even better. And you know, they've got the dollar menu, and that's worth noting because there was a time in fast food when the dollar menu was kind of a novelty and only that one other place had it, one of the girl Wendy's. Not that good, but at the time it was it, but now McDonald's has it, and it's better because they've got the double cheeseburger, the McChicken, all kinds of options. And here in the Pacific Northwest, we have the bacon cheeseburger, which you kids don't have in most of your states. I know, I've looked. I know what has what's in McDonald's everywhere. For instance, Texas, they have the hot and spicy McChicken. That's a good one on the dollar menu. We don't have one. But uh, I really like everything here, except the Philado fish. Don't get that. That's disgusting. Here we are at the greatest fountain drink, fountain drink in the world, McDonald's. The best ice. It really is. The best Coke in the world. I'd take it over a bottle, a can, anything the best Diet Coke. And here's a little something we call the Dango Special or the Fat Kids Special. I do a little bit of diet, about 40%. And then I do 60% Coca-Cola Classic. Yes, regular Coke is better. I should drink that because it's the best. But I'm trying to watch my girlish figure now, so I'm trying to cut it in half and not drink as much. The problem is with the refills, we sit inside and we eat and fellowship and I end up drinking four or five of these, so I drink it anyway, so it's kind of pointless. But it makes me feel good inside them. One thing about McDonald's we're missing out on is the fellowship. That's what it's really all about. You never come here alone. You come here and you sit for three hours. We do this on tour every day and we fellowship. It's a good time. Look at that straw dispenser. Classic. Okay. Alright. Here we are leaving McDonald's. We got kicked out at the drink station. They weren't too cool with that. But I just want to point out a few other things about McDonald's. Not only this great food and drink, they have these garbage cans where you can reach from your car window. And I appreciate that. That's high class. Try it lower, like around here. Hey, I'm Dango from Amber Pacific and I play drums and today I wanted to show you guys all of my drum set up here in the studio because I'm a big gear guy and I get a lot of questions about it so I just wanted to show everybody what it is I'll be playing on this record and uh, as we come in here we call this the manger our producer Martin's come up with this it uh, it's a pretty cool thing that makes the drums sound good and uh, if we look in here you can kind of see my basic setup what I've been going with so far and this is my Sonar Designer Series kit. I've had a couple years. Pretty solid. <laughs> but uh, let's just roll around back here. So
So in here we got everything mic'd up, a couple different mics on every drum and all the cymbals and I play minor cymbals. I have to give a shout out to Chris Brewer. I love these, but I use the uh, MB20 crashes and then the Byzance ride and hi-hats and splash and MB20 china. So I'm a big fan of these. I've been playing them about a year and my Vic Firth sticks that I use and uh, Evans heads. And I'm really liking this setup. I'm using G1s on here. And for anybody who doesn't care about drums, just skip this part. This is for all the drummers out there. Then I want to roll over here real quick, too. And basically, this company, Shine Custom Drums, is a brand new company. And they just built me this kit. And this is awesome. We just got it, so we're getting ready to um, hopefully use it. It sounds really good. And if you can get close up on here, I'm not sure if you can. But basically, it's red holographic spades we've got on here, like our logo. So I was trying to come up with something different because I've been playing the yellow for a while, but this is a new kit. It's birch, and uh, these sound great, so I'm really excited about those as well. And then lastly, coming over here, I'm a big snare drum guy, so we need to have different snares for different songs to have different sounds. And uh, last record, I think I used five or six different drums, and I want to use more on this one. So looking down the line here, we've got a little tiny 4x10, and then my Tama Bell Brass, and a Mapex, real deep one, and a... Shine 10 ply one, and then my sonar designer uh, DW Edge, which is half brass and half maple, and then my vented snare and Anton Fig Yamaha, and then a Chad Smith also. So it's a good setup of drums. I'm really excited to be able to use all this on the record, and just I'm a big gearhead guy, so I was psyched to get to share that with you guys. Thanks. We're at Dick's in Seattle, uh, in California. Most people in California have In-N-Out Burger. Other parts of the country have Chick-fil-A. In Seattle, we have Dick's. It's a good place, funny name. And uh, it's cheap. That's all I can really say about it. It's good. It's greasy. How's the milk It was kind of crunchy. Are you going to want to all that? No. What's this? <laughs> Milkshakes are for six year olds. Look how happy he is. I was hoping to make fun of him after he would lose it all. Maybe we were going to do another show. Look at Greg, he's so sad. It just wasn't a good milkshake. Look at the bottom. Oh, yeah, well, that's, those are cookies. Cookies aren't yeah, supposed, supposed to be there. Like that. It's a milkshake. You want to know how much we love each other in the bathroom as a band? How close we are? This is Greg Straw right here. Check that out. I've made out with Greg now. I've done it before. And now it's warm. <laughs> yeah, it's warm. When it's warm. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. This is my friend Bob. He's a stud. He works down here, makes coffee and several other drinks, and uh, he makes all my drinks for me. That's right. We have the Dango special here in Java Billiards, so. We try to hook him up, but he's changed on me in the last what, couple months. So, doing a smoothie, and I don't know, he gets a little crazy and rambunctious once in a while. But What's in the Dango special? The Dango, it's a milkshake. So, it's a 24 ounce milkshake. Comes with chocolate syrup, a little chocolate malt, a little cookie dough syrup. We used to have the uh, daily special. We had it for, ran it for a week. It was a daily special. We ran it for a week. All right, 24 ounce glass. Got to throw a little bit of caramel syrup on top of there, make it look all nice and pretty. Chocolate, and that is the dango right there. We'll throw the lid on. There you have the dango. Hey man, we just like to take this opportunity to thank all y'all for swinging by to see Amber Pacific on this here DVD compact disc. It's going to be a good one. Here we are in the studio just signing off saying thank you, Kylie. Nope.
Hope you enjoyed it twice. Thank you, everybody. Hope you learned a lot more about us and you get to know us a little bit better as people, and we hope you enjoy our music. Thanks for checking it out. We're Amber Pacific. Peace! Bye. Dot com. Backslash MySpace. Say hi to Argus. There we go. Cool. <laughs>